Hello everyone, my name is Precious Piri, uh, that's me in the picture. I am an environmentalist and a food blogger. I'm also the founder and owner of ZambianKitchen.com. I'm an author of an e-cookbook called The Zambian Foods Cookbook. And my educational background is that I have a Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Natural Resource Management from the University of Zambia. So Zambian Kitchen is a food blog that I created in 2017. I started on Instagram and the background to this, the reason why I created it was because uh, I had just gotten into cooking of uh, traditional Zambian foods and I was just new to Instagram. So as I was scrolling through, I could come across uh, traditional cuisine from other countries and personally I was looking for cuisine from my own country so that I can learn some of the recipes but I couldn't so I decided to create the recipes myself so I had to start consulting with people that were older than me that already had these recipes so that I can collect them and start uh, posting them on Instagram. I later decided to create a blog so that it could be an internet platform where somebody could just Google and find these recipes. I kept the platform um, strictly traditional and authentic Zambian dishes because I realized this was the gap that was missing. And uh, also the other purpose where I created the blog was because I wanted to share our local Zambian cuisine with the rest of the world. So after blogging for about two years, um, I decided to compile a book which I called the Zambian Foods Cookbook in the picture there. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this was so that I can, uh, I can have a a copy of these recipes, the traditional recipes that were passed on from our parents in digital form so that they can be preserved for future generations. And with this book, I've been able to reach uh, Zambian and even non-Zambian people locally and internationally who are interested in learning about Zambian recipes and Zambian cuisines. This is a snippet of just uh, some of the recipes that are contained in the book. We have some carpenta, which are small dried fish, some vegetables cooked with groundnuts, and also some cassava leaves, and some sweet potato leaves. So I got introduced to Modern Energy Cooking Services via an email. I was uh, sent an email by Martin Price, and he... He asked me if I would be interested in using cleaner and cheaper methods of cooking my recipes. So of course I was very interested in this because uh, it's cleaner energy and I'm an environmentalist myself. So it was really something that I was interested in. And he also mentioned that it was cheaper, so I was really looking forward to know what it was about. So he put me in touch with Nancy and Clement from CEEZ, -E -E um, who, who came through with the electric pressure cooker. And when I saw it, I was at first skeptical about the idea because um, for me, I've always thought an electric pressure cooker is an... And an appliance that you use to cook beans and some other foods that take longer to cook really and also the fact that uh, it takes uh, a shorter period to cook in my head I was thinking this must use up a lot of electricity because of its high efficiency so I was really surpri surprised when they explained to me that it's actually takes up less electricity than using a regular stove so i was really interested in finding out about this they also shared that they had conducted tests in the laboratory in which they used the electric pressure cooker the stove the, the hot plate as well as the lpg 
stove which is which uses gas and the charcoal brazier which is in Baula. and uh, the electric pressure cooker was one of the appliances which actually used up less electricity so i was quite impressed with this report and i wanted to test it out for myself so they left me with the electric pressure cooker so that i could start trying out my re recipes in my everyday cooking of uh, zambian foods i used it for about a week or two and i was really amazed at the amazing features that it had and the different types of food that it, it could actually cook uh, something that they also left me with was an an energy meter so that i could uh, test and record how much power was being consumed so i could um, I, con I connected this energy meter to the appliance so that every time I'm cooking, I'm able to tell how much power I'm using. We then went into a collaboration with Max and CZ, in which I was required to document my experience uh, using the EPC by means of uh, cooking videos. So I was given five recipes to cook, five different recipes, and I had to record videos of me cooking with the EPC. And um, my experience with these, like it was very, I, I found out that the EPC had very amazing features. And I was impressed by how many dishes it could actually cook. Uh, and also how much less power it was com consuming compared to a stove and to embaula. So I'm just going to share some of the um, the v v videos that I made on here. So the first video is the cooking of mshima, which is a staple food in Zambia. It's made from two ingredients, that's water and maize meal. And um, my experience, I, I didn't even know that you could cook shima in, the, an, in an electric uh, pressure cooker. So my experience using the EPC is that, uh, first of all, you always have to close the valve when you... Um, uh, heating something under high pressure and I discovered that when cooking shima you can uh, you can only use this one method where you mix the paste you mix the maize meal with the, with cold water in order for you to add it to boiling water since your water was boiling on high pressure because the other method of cooking shima just involves warming the water and then opening the lid and adding the the millimule directly so also on here when when steering the the shimmer you have to keep the lid open the lid has to be open so that you form a nice consistency and i discovered that the electric pressure cooker actually has uh, an option called the saute option on p05 where it can continue heating as the lid is open and that's how you can steer your, your shima. I appreciated the EPC for shima because it keeps the shima warm even after you've left it in the pot for some hours. So you can cook it and leave it in there for an hour and come and uh, save later. As long as you the EPC still remained connected, the shima will still be fresh. I also cooked some beans and this was dried beans uh, it took about two hours to prepare beans and normally the dry beans when I cook it on a stove or in a bowl, it can it can take maybe about four to five hours when cooking the beans that's where I noticed that a lot of power was saved for example Cooking beans on, on embaula can cost about seven kwacha. On a hot plate, a stove can cost about six kwacha. But in the EPC, I was only able to use uh, um, a cost of about less than one kwacha. I, I also prepared some 
chicken this is uh free range chicken in zambia it's known as village chicken is uh, basically hard in texture so it it takes um it takes up a long time to cook compared to the normal chicken so this also saved a lot of electricity and also uh cooking time so for village chicken the process is basically at first you you put you put it on on high pressure so that it can become tender and then once it is tender you can uh, fry it and then add some onions and tomatoes and your spices so i was able to cook on on high pressure using the the high pressure buttons on the epc and then when, when it was time to fry i used the saute option because it allows you to cook with the lid whilst the lid is open then when simmering i put it back on uh, on high pressure and only simmered for about two to three minutes and the chicken was tender this chicken was ready in less than an hour it was about 40 minutes it was actually 30 minutes it was ready in 30 minutes and the cooking cost is about 35 in way to one quarter 46 in way so that's for the chicken and then uh something else that i cooked in the epc was uh vegetables um for the vegetables i used the saute option throughout the whole process because uh, the uh, vegetables are very soft so there's no need to cook them on high pressure and uh, there wasn't really a significant save in, in, in electricity but it's just amazing to see how versatile the epc really is you can use it to cook so many dishes my thoughts and observations or uh, when cooking with the epc are that firstly it is very easy to use uh, anyone can use it the buttons are well labeled and it's very easy uh, to learn how to use um, it also cooks uh, fast so it cooks uh, shorter periods of time compared to a stove or a charcoal brazier it uses less electricity compared to the charcoal brazier and the stove and also something that i cooked using the epc was was fish uh, uh both fresh fish and dry fish and normally when i'm using uh, a stove or a charcoal brazier in Baula, there would be flies around but because the epc has um has a lid that is very much uh closed and then you you cannot smell anything coming from from the pot until you release the steam from the pressure valve there were no flies in the kitchen there were no flies in the kitchen as the aroma of the food is locked in the pot as it is very well covered also um the saute function makes it possible for many dishes to be cooked in the epc because it allows you to cook like in a normal pot uh, because you can remove the lid when you are cooking in the saute option and it's not on high pressure another feature is that uh, that i liked is that you can leave the pot unattended as long as you time it and set it you can leave it unattended and when it's done it will it will switch off on its own and then the pot itself is a non-stick material making it easy to clean the epc in my conclusion i would like to say that using cleaner energy such as the epc is definitely a step in the right direction because it will help a lot of cooks like myself and home cooks and households to save money on electricity and also to save time and not only does it do that it also protects our environment and it will help our nation in the issues of 
load shedding. I feel it's very important that this information must be disseminated all over social media and possibly some road shows so that it must be able to reach every household and personally as Zambian Kitchen I look forward to working with Max and CZ in doing so.